Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I'm here as part of the never-ending saga of the windmill repair. Hopefully, today, sometime, I'm going to have this project finished. The arbor's been made, the bearings and new hub have been mounted, the fan spins, The only thing that remains to be done is to have this piece mounted into the top of the tower. And to do that, I have to replace the bearing. The top of the tower originally had a single bearing in it. And that let this fan blade rock back and forth. Now with the fan wheel itself balanced on the, on the shaft, this didn't move a whole lot because of the way the leverage of the counterweight worked. Over time that bearing wore, wore out and allowed this to droop and caused it to not be pointed into the wind correctly. And, the, and instead of sitting flat, the weather vane was actually sitting like this. So my intent today is to reinforce this section here and to do that, I'm going to mount this section of pipe on the tower so that this shaft rides inside of it. That's going to do two things for me. One, it's going to help support the shaft and keep it from wearing that bearing sideways. It'll also uh, provide a reservoir for oil. The bearing in the tower had no way to oil it. It was captured but covered. And over time, it filled with water and rusted up. I'm gonna fill this tube with grease, and I'm gonna put a grease cirque on it so that I can inject grease into the spindle, and that will support this and help that bearing survive, and hopefully I'll get a few more years out of this windmill. My intention is to thread this piece of pipe into the bottom of this opening. fairly close to size at this point, but I think I need to drive this punch through there to open it up just enough to let the pipe start threading itself in. I'm going to take the wire welder and I'm going to tack this pipe into the bottom of this bearing cup. Hopefully that's going to make it stay and I'll be able to uh, make the thing work. Putting the C-clamp there, I give myself a little hand rest to work from. That's got it secured. That worked well. Ream the slag out of the way. Now I'm going to do something kind of risky. I'm going to see if I can dimple this bearing housing down a little bit to give me a bit more room in there. Well, that seems 
to have worked. It's a sealed bearing. It's only sealed on one side. I want to have this side down so that as I pump grease into that tube, it comes up and comes through the bearing. Now this is not considered proper method for installing a bearing, so don't do this. This was anything close to a precision installation. I'm definitely taking and adding run out to that bearing because I'm not putting a, a bearing driver in it. But for this particular use, I don't think it's gonna make a whole lot of difference. Outer pin secure. Grease circuit in place. I think I'm ready to go set this up outside. <sighs> I don't use this drill press very often, but when I do, it's very handy to have. We had an old drill press and I wanted a drill press vise and rather than buy one, I just took some angle iron scrap that we had and welded it together along with this broken piece of C-clamp. Dad brought the C-clamp home from the foundry because somebody had broken the C off. There was only just a little stub laying in there. I don't know what he intended using it for. Probably like me. He just saw something laying there that looked like it was useful and brought it home. Well, I took it welded it onto this framework that I made. And for the last 50 years, it's been a drill press vise, nearly indestructible. It's been through all kinds of things. But it was worth the price I paid for it. And the nice thing is, since I made every piece of it, I know that if I needed to, I could make another one. The next step, Mount the zerk into the cap and then go attach it to the windmill that sits out in the backyard. Now we got grease in it. 